Next. Bobby writes, hi guys, I recently saw you guys buying the new Baywatch film news because, and I quote, The Rock is in it. And my question <laughs> is regarding this. Guys like Dwayne Johnson and Vin Diesel are so likable off screen, there are some people who would watch their films regardless. Does this mean guys like Russell Crowe, who have a reputation of being difficult, maybe need to sell their films a bit more? Do you think a likable off screen persona is vital to make an actor's film popular nowadays? And if so, who's to say they're not acting off screen too? Thanks, guys. No, it's not essential. Um, I, my my personal opinion, Jake Gyllenhaal is rather unlikable off screen, um, but he's great, and I'll watch anything that dude's in. And his films have have they can succeed just like anybody else's film can succeed. But I do believe it is a factor. It is absolutely a factor. And I'm so glad you brought up in your email Russell Crowe because I believe, other than Daniel Day Lewis. I believe Russell Crowe is the best actor we've had in the world in the past 15 years. I, I, I really firmly believe that. And I believe that the only reason more people don't see it is because of how freaking unlikable he is. I mean, he's he's been very difficult. He's had a lot of off, you know, off screen difficulties where there's, you know, hitting guys in the head with phones or whether it's like <laughs> launching a country album or I, I mean, all the other <laughs> adventures that Russell Crowe has been on. He time in, time out, without exception, always brings a 100% A game to every movie he's in. Even when he shows up in a movie like Man with the Iron Fists, it's like, holy crap, he felt out of place because he's so good in this movie. Like, that guy should easily have three Oscars on his shelf right now mm -hmm. instead of the one that he has. And I think a part of that is people are just damn sick of him. Um, and I think that's part of it. And you're absolutely right. Part of the reason we gravitate, I think, to The Rock's movies is because he is, we love loving him. People love loving The Rock. He's so charming and friendly. And, you know, we've met, we've all met him several times. And he is just exactly what you think he would be. That billion dollar smile, that charm, that wit, remembers people's names, which I always find amazing when celebrities can do that. Um, he's just that type of guy. Vin Diesel, same thing. Like, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He's constantly active on social media, always makes time for his fans, all that kind of stuff. And while I do not believe it is essential, anymore. I don't believe it's essential right now. It's certainly a part and it's becoming a bigger part. And whether that's a good or a bad thing, I don't know. I'll let you decide that. But anyway, Schnepp, how do you see this whole thing? Well, I mean, you nailed it with The Rock. I mean, he's such a, a fun personality off screen that anything he does on screen, it's kind of fun to watch him because you're like, he's playing a version of himself. He's like acting is like either character acting or then you grow into becoming a personality of playing yourself in different roles like Jack Nicholson. He's sort of grew into just being Jack, you know? And it's like any movie he's in, you're like, oh, Jack Nicholson is playing himself in something, you know? <laughs> so I think that's kind of the rock. I mean, he's done different films like Faster where he plays like a darker version of himself or a more slightly more evil or something. But I mean, I think the character actors like that that grow into being like personality actors like The Rock or Vin Diesel, they have an easier time, I think, falling into a, a, a position of a, a role. They could also fall into a bad position where they have a series of clunkers like The Rock was. I, I can't remember now who played the Tooth Fairy. I think it was The Rock. Oh, that right? was The Rock. Was yeah, in that so deal with Disney. That didn't yeah. fit with his personality. Like, why are you doing The Tooth Fairy? That's goofy. A bad comedy it was just that corny kind of comedy where you're like, you don't want to see him in that, and no one went to see that movie because no one wants to see The Rock in that kind of movie. So I think Russell Crowe is a different kind of actor where he still plays characters, mm -hmm. and he's he inhabits the role. Like, uh, what was that cigarette one where you, he gained a lot of weight? Uh, inside Man. Insider. Mm -hmm. uh, no, insider. insider. Yeah, Insider. insider. Yeah. Fantastic he, A movie role. in which he acted circles around Al Pacino. Right. Which not an is, easy yeah, thing not to easy. do. So, I mean, those are the different kind of caliber of actors, but I agree with you. What Chuck and phones of people, you know, I don't know about the country song stuff, you know, but it's like, <laughs> you know, being like some kind of a jerk face is like, that's going to not really help you out when people, oh, what's this guy's next movie? Yeah, the last time I read about him, he was like, you know, doing some stupid shit in real life. I mean, that, that has a toll, that takes a toll. You and know. you know what else hurt? I mean, uh, we forget about this now, but who for the longest time was America's sweetheart? It was Meg Ryan for the longest oh, time. That's remember, right. there was a, for, maybe some of you might be too young to remember this, but there was a, a, an age when Meg Ryan was America's sweetheart. I yep. mean, that was it, and she had this dream Hollywood fairy tale marriage to Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid, and then she did a movie with Russell Crowe oh, and boy. ran off with Russell Crowe, yeah. and that ended her. Destroyed marriages. It, it, just, destroyed it destroyed her career. Her career got destroyed. I yeah. think it just went even more to the thing about people looking for an excuse not to like Russell Crowe. I mean, yeah. that was that was a heavy one. Anyway, Mark, how do you see this whole yeah, thing? Well, Jennifer Aniston 
Jen's raising her hand like, I know two people who did that. <laughs> <laughs> you still like them? Okay. <laughs> I think sometimes it just does depend on some superficial things. Like if you just see somebody smile and you're like, oh, yeah, I bet I like them. They could be a dick behind closed doors. You don't know. I'm horrible to work with when I'm not on camera. <laughs> Having said all it's that. True. Nothing it's like, true. Like Tommy Lee Jones and Kevin Costner don't look like dudes you really want to hang out with, but I love seeing their movies. So if somebody is, isn't is cool, off, it doesn't make me not want to see their movie, but if I like somebody in real life, or at least I think I do, like Jim Carrey, I've had the pleasure of meeting him, the late Robin Williams, somebody like that, I will want to see their movie more. So it never has a negative effect on me, it only makes me want to see some people's movies more. Yep. The first thing he does every day, he walks in, goes into the fridge, mm -hmm. finds my lunch, and the first <laughs> words out of his mouth every day are, is this your lunch? <laughs> well, now it's mine. That's, That's what he does see every do day. <laughs> yep. And, see I, and I'm, Ellis, I can't do a, anything about it. He's a real it. monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Delicious McRib. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.